Welcome to the Kentucky Labor Cabinet, Office of Occupational Safety and Health online training resource. This class is presented as a service of the Division of Education and Training. Please read the following disclaimer. When you're ready to continue, click the forward arrow below. Welcome to the course, Scaffolding Hazards. Scaffolds are integral to the construction industry, with approximately 65% of the workforce involved in work from scaffolds. When used properly, scaffolds can save significant time and money. Though they are convenient and necessary, there are four major hazards associated with worker injuries that everyone needs to be aware of for proper scaffold safety. These four hazards are as follows. Falls, scaffold collapse, struck by falling material, and electrical hazards. Falls are attributed to the lack of guardrails, improper installation of guardrails, and the failure to use personal fall arrest systems when required. OSHA standards represent the minimum level of protection. However, many contractors can and are increasing safety margins by exceeding the requirements of the OSHA standards. Fall protection regulations consist of some exceptions that can be complicated and confusing. When exceptions to some of these standards come into play, some people find it difficult to follow. To fully understand the fall protection regulation related to scaffolding, you must first understand the concept of horizontal and vertical standards. A horizontal standard is a broad, general standard, like 29 CFR 1926 subpart M, fall protection. This standard is your basis for fall protection. It is general and applies to any industry. It's where you begin. A vertical standard is more specific. It applies to a particular industry, application, condition, or practice, like 29 CFR 1926 subpart L, scaffolding. It is important to note that issues addressed in the vertical standard always override the same issue addressed in the horizontal standard. Like most other fall hazards, you're looking at one of two solutions, guardrails or tying off. Most companies opt for safety railings because they are easy to install and are a form of passive protection or protection that requires no interaction to work. Guardrail systems are the primary form of fall protection for supported scaffolds and are used in addition to personal fall arrest system on suspended scaffolds. The problem is many don't get the rails right. Scaffolding rules are complex, which is why OSHA requires they be erected under the supervision of a competent person. According to paragraph 1926.451 G1, fall protection must be provided for all scaffolds that are more than 10 feet high above a lower level. In the case of suspended platforms, a fall arrest system and a guardrail system are required. The fall arrest system used on suspended platforms is to be attached by a lanyard to a vertical lifeline that hangs suspended from a higher level or a structural member of the scaffold. This solution makes sure that if a suspended platform collapses, the workers will be suspended by the secondary vertical wire ropes. When a lanyard is attached to a structural member of the scaffold, the suspended platform needs to be equipped with additional support lines that are independently fixed and equipped with automatic locking devices capable of stopping a fall of a platform in the event of one or both suspension ropes fail. The top rail is the highest component of a guardrail system. It is to be installed between 38 and 45 inches above the scaffold platform. When mid-rails are used, they must be installed, as you would guess, midway between the top edge of the guardrail system and the platform surface. The regulations, 29 CFR 1926.451 G4, Roman numeral 15, state that cross bracing can serve as a top rail or a mid rail, depending on where the two braces cross. If they cross between 20 and 30 inches from the walking surface, this can serve as a mid rail. If they cross between 38 and 48 inches, they can serve as a top rail, but never both. And of course, logically, it would be impossible for two straight cross braces to cross in more than one location. When a scaffold gives way or falls over, this is considered a scaffold collapse. We'll go over more specifics in the following slides. The proper erection of a scaffold is essential to preventing the collapse. Before erecting the scaffold, a number of factors must be accounted for. The amount of weight the scaffold will be required to hold, including the weight of the scaffold itself, materials, and workers, all must be considered. Foundation stability, the placement of scaffold planks, Distance from the scaffold to the work surface and tie end requirements are just a few of the other items that must be considered prior to building a scaffold. There are many reasons for a scaffold collapse, but let's list a few of the most common. 
The scaffold was not inspected for defects or lack of maintenance. The scaffolding was improperly installed. Non-compliance with OSHA regulations. Defective parts were used to build and support the scaffold. Overloading the scaffold platform. The scaffold was not properly braced. It wasn't designed properly. The scaffold was not level and plumb, and changing environmental conditions. In this sense, overloading is simply placing more weight on the scaffold than it can hold. Paragraph 1926.451A1 states, except as provided in paragraphs A2, A3, A4, A5, and G of this section, each scaffold and scaffold component shall be capable of supporting, without failure, its own weight and at least four times the maximum intended load applied or transmitted to it. A simple method to determine if a scaffold is overloaded is the deflection method. Platforms, planks, or decking must not deflect more than one-sixtieth of their span when loaded. The deflection is measured with a tape measure and a straight edge. For example, 120 inches multiplied by 1 divided by 60 equals 2 inches of maximum deflection. Work on or from scaffolds is prohibited during storms or high winds unless a competent person has determined that it is safe for employees to be on the scaffold and those employees are protected by a personal fall arrest system or windscreens. Windscreens shall not be used unless the scaffold is secured against the anticipated wind forces imposed. Wintry or icy conditions are especially dangerous for builders. When the temperatures drop, scaffoldings can become slippery. One wrong step can lead to a serious, if not deadly, fall. Not only can scaffolding become icy, but it can become weighted down by accumulating snow. With the weight of the snow, someone walking on the surface could cause the entire scaffold to collapse. Workers on scaffolds are not the only ones exposed to scaffold-related hazards. Many individuals have been injured or killed due to being struck by materials or tools that have fallen from scaffold platforms. These people must be protected from falling objects, and this is done in one of two ways. The first is to install tow boards or netting on work platforms to prevent these items from falling to the ground or lower-level work areas. The other option is to erect barricades that physically prevent individuals from walking under work platforms. Paragraph 1926.451H1 states, In addition to wearing hard hats, each employee on a scaffold shall be provided with additional protection from falling hand tools, debris, and other small objects through the installation of tow boards, screens, or guardrail systems, or through the erection of debris nets, catch platforms, or other canopy structures that contain or deflect the falling objects. When the falling objects are too large, heavy, or massive to be contained or deflected by any of the above listed measures, the employer shall place such potential falling objects away from the edge of the surface from which they could fall and shall secure these materials as necessary to prevent their falling. The purpose of a tow board is to prevent objects, tools, and other equipment from falling over the edge or being knocked from a scaffolding structure. It's best practice to implement tow boards whenever handrails are used or whenever there's a risk of tools or objects falling from the edge. Tow board requirements are to be no less than 3.5 inches from the top edge of the tow board to the level of the walking working surface, and they must be capable of withstanding 50 pounds of force. Scaffold netting, sometimes called debris netting or construction safety netting, is one of the many tools used in the construction industry when working with scaffolding. The main objective of scaffold netting is to better protect the people working on and around the scaffolding from falling objects. Caution tape is often used to keep people away from overhead hazards, but is often disregarded or taken down, creating possible struck by hazards. A more robust system such as plastic mesh or wooden barricades is generally more effective and much easier to maintain. When members of the public or other employees could potentially move close enough to be struck by falling tools or other objects, Creating barriers to prevent them from entering the area where they can be struck is best practice. Regardless of the type of falling object protection used, it is crucial that other individuals on the work site are aware of the overhead work. It is the responsibility of the competent person to assure there are no electrical hazards present during scaffold use. Generally, a minimum of 10 feet must be maintained between the scaffold and electrical hazards. If this distance cannot be maintained, then the hazard must be de-energized or properly insulated by the power company. Coordination between the power company and the company erecting and using the scaffold cannot be overstated. Further details of distance requirements are specified in the following slides.
1926.451F6 states, The clearance between scaffolds and power lines shall be as follows. Scaffolds shall not be erected, used, dismantled, altered, or moved in such a way that they or any conductive material handled on them might come closer to exposed and energized power lines than is seen on the following chart. Insulated lines with voltage less than 300 volts, the minimum clearance distance is 3 feet. Insulated lines with voltage over 300 volts, but less than 50 kilovolts, the minimum clearance distance is 10 feet. Insulated lines with voltage over 50 kilovolts, the minimum clearance distance is 10 feet plus 0 0.4 inches for each 1 kilovolt over the 50 kilovolts. An alternative for this scenario combination is two times the length of the line insulator, but never less than 10 feet. Uninsulated lines with voltage less than 50 kilovolts, the minimum clearance distance is 10 feet. Uninsulated lines with voltage over 50 kilovolts, the minimum clearance distance is 10 feet plus 0 0.4 inches for each 1 kilovolt above 50 kilovolts. The alternative for this scenario combination also is two times the length of the line insulator, but never less than 10 feet. Exceptions to 1926.451 F6 are as follows. Scaffolds and materials may be closer to power lines than specified above, where such clearance is necessary for performance of work, and only after the utility company or electrical system or operator has been notified of the need to work closer, and the utility company or electrical system operator has de-energized the lines, relocated the lines, or installed protective coverings to prevent accidental contact with the lines. Scaffolds and scaffold components shall be inspected for visible defects by a competent person before each work shift and after any occurrence which could affect the scaffold's structural integrity. This concludes scaffolding hazards. You should now be familiar with some of the general hazards associated with the falls, scaffolding collapse, struck by objects, and electrical hazards. This is obviously not all the scaffolding hazards or the requirements of the scaffolding standard, but we covered some of the major hazards that will give you a good starting place. Also be sure to check out our other free safety and health training courses on our website. And as always, thank you for taking this course.